Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you three different methods to create header transitions inside of Wix Studio without code. Now the first two methods I'm gonna show you are kind of already built into Wix Studio. And then the third one is gonna be a custom transition built with the Wix Studio effects. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in Wix Studio and let's say, for example, we want this header to be over the hero section on the website. And maybe we don't want it to have a background color, but as we scroll down the page, you know, some sections, this header might be hard to see. So we might want to have the background color come in, but after the user starts scrolling. So what we can do is actually grab the header. And if we come over to the inspector panel, what I want to do is come down to position. Right now, the position type is set to default, but I'm actually gonna switch this over to pinned. Once we do that, the header is now technically sitting on top of the hero section. So when I click on the hero section, you'll kind of notice that the border kind of goes behind the header here. So if I go ahead and grab this header and come over to the design section inside the inspector panel, we can just go ahead and remove the background color here. And we'll be able to see that the header is sitting on top of the hero section now. Now, when I go ahead and preview, you'll notice that the header is following us down. But like I mentioned earlier, especially in moments like this, it's kind of hard to read the content inside the header because it's kind of going over the content on the website. So what we want to do is actually grab the header. And if we scroll all the way down, we'll have scroll effects. Now you will not see this unless your position type is set to pinned. If it's not set to pinned, you will not see the scroll effect option here. But what we can do is these two different options. The first one we're gonna do is fill color. Once we do that, we can set the color in the background. We can of course choose any color we want, but let's go ahead and stick with white. So now when I go ahead and preview the website, as soon as I start scrolling down, you'll notice that the background color appears and we have a nice white background. So now when we go down to these other sections, the content inside of the header is not getting lost with the content on the page. And then of course, as soon as we scroll all the way up to the top of the page, the background color fades out. Now the second method is actually going to be a transition. So if I go ahead and turn off the fill color and turn on transition, when we turn on transition, we have a bunch of settings that we can change. The first one being is we can change this from move to fade. So just how it sounds, if I go ahead and preview, as soon as the user starts scrolling, the header fades away. And if I scroll up back to the top, it fades back in. The other option was move. And as you can probably assume, when I scroll down, moves up out of frame. And then as I scroll up, you'll notice that the header moves back into the frame. With each of these different options like move and fade, we'll have different options that we can change for each of those. Like for the first one, we can actually change the direction in which the header moves. Now, I feel like 99% of the time, you're just gonna wanna leave this as up, but you can create some cool effects by choosing the down, left, or right options. You can also choose the distance. So for example, if we have one of those headers, I'm just gonna try to create it really quickly uh, and really scuffed version of this, okay? But let's go ahead and flip these around. So we'll swap these and maybe in this top one, we just have like a little promotional banner and it's a really small banner that is like 21 pixels or maybe we'll do 11 pixels for now. So what we could do is grab the header and what we could do is set this to go 11 pixels up, okay? So once we go ahead and press preview, when we scroll, it's only going to remove that little promotional banner that we had. And then if we scroll up, we'll now see the promotional banner again. So that is one way we could use this transition move effect to hide a banner behind it. We could also set the delay, the duration, the easing properties. So if it comes in linear or has a nice smooth animation. And then for fade, we only have the delay and the duration uh, options here. But the cool thing is, is with these scroll effects, we can actually use both of them at once. So if we want this to move out the way and we'll choose it to move up 100% and have a background color, then what that means is as soon as we scroll down, you'll notice that the white comes in 
And if we continue to move down the page, the header will disappear. And if we start scrolling up, the header will reappear with the white background. But if we go up to the very top of the page, you'll notice that the white background disappears again. So it is kind of nice that we are able to combine both of those effects in one to create something a little more custom. But now let's go ahead and create a custom transition using the effects built into Wix Studio. So what I actually want to do is I want to grab the, the logo and the menu, and I'm gonna press the three dots here and I'm gonna place them in a container. Once it's placed in a container, what I want to do is go ahead and copy this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on the section on the page and I'm gonna press paste. So now we should have this little item right here. Then I'm gonna grab the header and I'm actually going to remove this from the page because we actually don't need it. We're gonna be creating our own effect here. So what I want to do is I wanna create this version right here. And just for fun, let's go ahead and copy and paste this. We'll bring this one down and this one is going to be our new effect. So just for example, let's go ahead and make the logo blue. And maybe that's not enough. Maybe we wanna have a blurry background. So I'm gonna come over to the add panel. I'm gonna add an iframe, add it in here, stretch it. And now we need to enter the code. Now I'm gonna be using code from the Wixfix website where we have the glass morphism effect. I'm gonna copy this code and I'm gonna paste it in here just like that. So now we should have a nice little blurry background. And of course, I want to go to the layers panel and make sure that this iframe is at the back, just like that. Fantastic. Now what I want to do is actually grab this section and I just want to remove all of the margins here really quickly, just so that we can put our headers at the very top of the page. And then I'm going to send these to the top left. I'm gonna set the width to be 100% and I'm gonna set the height to 90. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one right here and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna send this to the top left, set the width to be 100%, set the height to 90. And the last thing I want to do is actually change this one to say scroll header, just like that. Great. To create this effect, what we now need to do is actually grab the scroll header. We're gonna come over to position and we're gonna set this to pinned. Now we don't want to pin it just to the section. We actually want to pin it to the page. Perfect. Now let's grab the default header and we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna set the position type to pinned and we're gonna set pinned to page. Now, if your headers are not in the correct order, all you have to do is just reorder them here in the layers panel if you want to. But what I am aiming for right now is to have the default header on top. And now what we need to do is actually kind of hide the background header, but that will happen when we add the effect. So in order to add this effect, now what I want to do is actually come down to the next section, the section below the hero section, and I'm gonna select this one right here. And then we're gonna switch over to animation and effects. Now we don't wanna hover or click animation or effect. We want a scroll effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this and press add. Now we don't want the animation to apply itself or apply a scroll interaction to itself. In fact, we can't even do that. So what I'm gonna do is press this little drop down, and I'm gonna choose on canvas. Now what I want to do is select the scroll header here and I'm gonna say from its design. And that didn't really seem to work. So what I now want to do is with this scroll header, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to default temporarily. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the default header as well, because we're gonna actually apply the effects and then we're gonna pin it. We're gonna grab the next section again, head on over to animation and effects. Then we're gonna drop down this animated element. We'll choose on canvas. And what we want to do is select the scroll header. The scroll header is now selected. Now what we want to do is go to its design. We're gonna choose fade and we're going to adjust the animation. We want the starting opacity to be at zero. And then what we want to do is we need to find a place where we want the transition to happen. For example, maybe right here, we want the animation to start. And what we're gonna to want to do is move this little starting point for the animation area to this red line. As I scroll up and down the website, you'll notice that the red line is moving. And this is basically showing us exactly where we are in the viewport. So right here is where we want the animation to start. And maybe right about here, we want the animation to end. So we are about, we'll set this to, set this to 40 and we will start at 20 just for ease. 
fantastic. And now what I want to do is actually do the same exact thing, but in reverse for the default header. So once again, we're gonna go down to this section here, go down to animation and effects. We're gonna add another one, and then we're going to choose the default header. So we're gonna grab the default header here. We want to go to its design. So what we're gonna do is actually say from its design, because the opacity is already set at 100. So now what we want to do is we want to fade it out. So we're gonna move it from its design and choose fade adjust animation and we want the final opacity to be zero and then because we set the other animation area to 20 and 40 we're just going to go ahead and do that here for this one as well so now we should have something that looks like this and we'll go ahead and back out and now that the animation has already been applied we can now grab the scroll header head on back over to the design tab and under position type, we will set this to pinned and we'll pin it to the page. Now let's do the same exact thing for the default header. We will set it to pinned and pin it to the page. And now, because we already applied those effects, when we go ahead and press preview, we should now see those effects still applied to our header. And it looks really, really clean. So that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more work studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you all in the next one.